Earlier this week, it happened, y'all. The Cleveland Browns went all in and made a trade that was heard around the world. Not just in the NFL, we talking about the whole world. When they traded for superstar receiver and NFL poster child, the face of the NFL, Odell Beckham Jr. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm not lying to you, bro. I swear to God, they real deal traded for Odell Beckham Jr. I'm talking about every Browns fan was looking just like this right here when that notification dropped. What the heck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? New York Giants general manager David Gettleman decided to trade the superstar receiver after signing him to a five year, $90 million extension for a first round pick, a second round pick, and safety Jabril Prepper. But the crazy thing is, he did that after saying this right here. I'll, I'll say this, uh, it's a repeat of what I said at my postseason presser. Uh, we didn't sign Odell to trade him, okay? So I know that's all over the place. So understand that, and that's the, all I need to say about that. Yeah, don't trust anybody, y'all. Folger be lying to be lying nowadays. But I say this all in point to point out how after this trade, the Browns went from a 25 to 1 chance to win the Super Bowl all the way to 14 to 1. Only four teams have a higher chance to win the Super Bowl over them. That's crazy how one trade can change the whole dynamic, the whole outlook of your franchise. As for this video, I want to talk about what I think OBJ will bring to Cleveland. He goes to a situation where he gets to play with his best friend, Jarvis Landry. He also goes to a situation where he gets to play with Baker Mayfield, the rookie of the year, the dude who's going to, I think, will be a great quarterback for years to come. He did it in Oklahoma. I don't see why it won't stop in the NFL. And probably the most important thing, in my opinion, he gets to play under Todd Munkin, the newly hired offensive coordinator out of Tampa Bay. This dude was the Bucks offensive coordinator. He had these boys with the number one passing attack. I'm talking about with the roulette that was quarterback with Ryan Fitzpatrick, then James Winston, then Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like somehow they managed to have the number one passing attack. If y'all did not know, they led the lead. And with Baker Mayfield, a steady quarterback situation and somebody who has tremendous talent. Oh, well, I feel like better than both of them to be in my opinion. I feel like this is gonna be one of the best years Odell possibly could have because they are an uh, air raid team now, basically. Let's talk about the talent that's surrounding him now. He going from playing with Sterling Shepard, they number two receiving that say, to playing with Jarvis Landry, a player that, in my opinion, is just like a, a he, he remind me like a mini Anquan Bolden, how hard he is after the catch. If you look at the stats side by side, as you can see, he did everything better than Sterling Shepard this year, bro. It wasn't much, but I just feel like as a play, football player, the way you use him, you can get Jarvis Landry involved just because how violent he is after the catch a lot more you could with Sterling Shepard, which is gonna open up everything for Odell. Another reason I feel like Odell gonna have a monster year is because of tight end David Njoku. 6'4", 247 pounds, all muscle, look mean as hell. This dude off the chain rip, bro. I don't know if y'all seen him. But he's straight out of the University of Miami, where I go to now, the U. Dude got 56 receptions for 639 yards last year and four TDs, along a 66 yard. That mean he's stretching the field, y'all. 66 yard at tight end? Crazy. And finally, the reason I feel like OBJ gonna have a monster season is because of they loaded backfield that feature rookie sensation Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Chubb's stats as a rookie is amazing, bro. Almost a thousand yard rushing, eight TDs. Then he had 20 receptions out the backfield for two TDs. Boom, pet that with Kareem Hunt. You got a back coming in and go 824 yards rushing last year, seven TDs. Then he caught the ball for 378 yards and another seven TDs. And all he did his rookie year, y'all, was lead the league in rushing. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like a damn good combination to me. You got to pick and choose. Are you going to stop their wide receivers and just play off and let him kill you, let their backfield kill you? Or hell, are y'all going to load the box and give OBJ and Jarvis Landry all the room and space they need to go one-on-one? -on -one? In conclusion, I believe OBJ will bring to Cleveland what has been missing for a long time. I think he's gonna have one of his best seasons yet. It's going back to like his 2015 season, which was clearly his best season when he had 1,413 touchdowns. And I think we could actually see him play like Antonio Brown like numbers up, like just some crazy, crazy stuff this year. I'm hoping for it. I love to watch the man play, a big fan of it. Glad he got out of that situation. We might see Cleveland as a premier team now. Definitely, I feel like they gonna win the AFC North, in my opinion. And hey, Dare I say it, bruh, 
The Browns are now must watch TV. <laughs> Ooh, wee, that don't even sound right coming out somebody's mouth. Jesus. But thank y'all for watching. If y'all enjoyed the video, leave a like. If y'all want me to do more player profiles like this, I can. I can go more in detail. This is my first one, so I really didn't know where I was going with it. I was just random about the situation. Appreciate you. Love y'all. Peace out.